show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Blog Talk Radio. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! <laughs> I look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, what's the up, bud? The Bears are who we thought they were. That's why we took the damn field. You want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were. And so we had them off the hook. I mean, you can take a knee and try a 56-yard field goal. This is not Detroit, man. This is the Super Bowl. It is more about them than it is about the team. Cannot play with them. Cannot win with them. Cannot coach with them. Can't do it. I want winners. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? I just hope we can win a game. You need to be more like a doll. We don't need a bunch of cats in here. Be a doll. We don't need no meows. We don't need no cats. We need more dolls. <laughs> Mike, what's up, bud? I think that the NFL knows what Randy Moss has done with marijuana, and I think the NFL knows what Randy Moss does with marijuana. Good morning, and thank you for joining me. He is questionably parked near Venice Beach. We're live, shirts versus skins, with Alistair Conrad. <laughs> Good morning, indeed. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you, Tiger, for that intro. It's always a good one. Um, welcome to Shirts v. Skins. I am Alistair Conrad. Uh, welcome to the show, those of you on Facebook Live, what's happening. Uh, the, the rest of you listening around the world, <laughs> the millions of you listening around the world, top of the morning. Happy Sunday, fun day, everybody. Um, I, f- I feel as though I'm questionably parked in Seattle. As you can see, maybe... It is overcast, uh, it rained through the night, and it's it's getting a little old, I'll be honest. I didn't move here for the rain, I moved here for the drought, and I, the, it, it could never rain again, and I, I would be fine. You know, I, I will say this, <laughs> I will say this, you will know... It has hit catastrophic levels out here in the West, in Southern California, you know, with the whole drought and, oh, we need the rain, all that type of stuff. Once the golf courses start getting phone calls, because it takes 300,000 gallons of water to, to, on average, to water a golf course every day. And you would think if there was such a drought, they'd be getting a phone call, Right? Okay, I can only imagine that phone call to Beverly Hills Country Club, <laughs> you know, from the L.A. Water and Power, whatever they are, and they, you know, you know how that would go. You know how that would go. It'd be the the Beverly Hills guy saying yes, can I help you? And the guy saying yeah, we need you to stop watering the golf course at the country club. And that's when the slaughter happens. That's when we all that's when we all die. Because there's no dudes giving up their country club. That's that is fact. That is just fact. Um, I was looking at the the top headlines in sports and <clears throat> one of them in particular caught my eye. And it's something that I just want to touch on. Um, we'll get to you know we'll get to more vikings chatter timberwolves chatter i mean timberwolves let up 142 points <laughs> last night they scored 130 but if you had the over in minnesota and houston more power to you 272 points was scored in that game last night i, I mean it's i don't necessarily know what to attribute the bad defense to I think everybody is in agreement 
when uh, they talk about defense and how it's about effort. So does that necessarily mean Chicago played with more effort when Thibodeau was in Chicago and their defenses were so good? Or is he actually not that good of a, a defensive coach because he can't get the Timberwolves to play good defense? I just don't know what it is. I mean, you got a really good team. I mean, so it's super young. And I'll get to, I'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit too. The draft, you know, the top five kids are all freshmen. You know, NBA wonders why its product isn't good. Um, but as for the Timberwolves, I just, I don't, I, I don't understand what it is. I get it. Houston's explosive on offense, about 142 points. <laughs> you got to try to suck that bad, right? I mean, that's 142 divided by four, carry the three. That's over 35. Yeah, that's 35 over, a hair over 35 points a quarter <laughs> that you're letting up. Granted, I get it. They scored 130, but holy cow. I mean, that's just, uh, wow. And it's not overtime. That's the, that's the kicker. Uh, so I'll, I'll get to that in, the, in a little bit. Minnesota goal for basketball. You know, the sky was definitely falling at 3-6 and six in the Big Ten. And uh, losers of five straight at the time. A couple of heartbreakers in there. And now all of a sudden they've rattled off seven straight wins. And uh, they beat Penn State yesterday handily. The score only is a 10-point game, but they 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 were in command of that, that game, I mean, almost from the onset. Um, and uh, Lynch, 11 blocks. That's awesome. 11 blocks, no fouls, which is incredible. Um, and, uh, you know, Nate Mason almost got a triple-double. Uh, Murphy, 16 points, 16 rebounds. The guy, I mean, they're playing really well. I just, just I don't know... You know they're young. They're super young. Twenty-two and seven. Now they're ten and six after the, the seven straight wins. Um, I just don't know what to make of them. Uh, as you can see, the the sun is coming into the eyes, but I kind of like the 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 light on the Facebook Live. Otherwise, I'm in the shade, but <laughs> it feels really good on my face, so I'm gonna leave it. Uh, bossy, what's up, bud? Top of the morning. And by the way, those of you on Facebook Live, seriously, if you have anything that you want to talk about, just type it on in. Let's chat. You know, it's not football season. So quite honestly, all the other sports I could care less about, uh, you know, I mean, whatever, I'll watch them. And I do, and I follow, and I keep up, you know, more than one person possibly should. Um, you know, but at the same time, if there's something that you want to talk about, throw it out there. Do it. Um... You know, and, and and let me know what's up. Don, that goes for you too, bud. You know, I mean, if, if you want to talk about something, just type it on in the uh, the the Facebook Live and let's go, let's chat. Um, so I mentioned there's something on ESPN top stories that I saw. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm rattling down uh, Ravens, by the way, their, their safety, Matt Elam, just got busted for pot. Which is funny because I live in California where it's legal, and it, he got basically busted with what's the equivalent to four and a half ounces, where I could go to a dispensary, and I think I can only buy an ounce at a time, but you get my drift, right? Like he got whatever he got pulled over for reckless driving, so he's an idiot. Number one, you know, to be puffing and driving, blah blah blah, but. So, but I'm going down, and I'm going down. Lonzo Ball's dad is an idiot. Lonzo Ball's dad, I, I'm trying to find the equivalent in my mind. Um, yeah, I saw a um, <laughs> quarter pound. Is that four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's four and a half ounces, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a quarter pound. Um, and But yeah, he did have three grams of oxycodone. I saw that. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't necessarily know three grams... Uh, does oxycodone, when they give them to you in the 5, the 7, and the 10s, or the, I'm assuming those are m milligram, not just grams. I'm, I get it. Three grams, he's got an eighth of oxy. You know? Yeah, Richard Williams. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, good morning, bud. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, whatever. He's got an eighth of oxy. I don't necessarily know how much, you know, I mean, what? who cares? Jesus, God. You know, I, like, drugs... In this society is so stupid. It is so dumb.
who you know like like I say we have pot that's legal here in California this guy gets busted with the you know a quarter pound of, of weed in wherever the hell he was I can't remember where he was you know but it's just who cares it's pot number one oxycodone is a pain reliever so what so what you know I I am the guy who is just a proponent of all drugs if you want to do drugs who who cares? It's like prostitution to me. If you want to do, you know, if you want to like have sex and and get paid, go for it. Why why does anybody? Why should anybody be able to tell you what to do? That's just it makes zero sense to me. Again, with the whole pot and and drugs, somebody wants to bang H, let them. Who cares? What what is it bothering you? You know, granted, now, if they go out and, uh, like, rip off a bunch of bath salts and go and, like, try and eat the neighbor's face, I get it. Probably don't want that stuff happening, but that's, that. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's something that is independent, and you, you cross that bridge when it comes. I, I just don't get it. You know, but so what? If people want to do drugs, let them. Say, what does it bother you? You know, like, oh, <laughs> got to take a drug test for work, you know? See if you've smoked pot in the last month. You know, have you had alcohol in the last month? Right? I mean, it, our society is so twisted. It's so twisted. It just makes no, no sense. People think pot is just a, a bad thing. Really? Whatever. Anyway. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go off on a tangent on that. But, like I was getting at, I'm getting down the list, right, of the top headlines. And the last one on there... Outside of being an insider and, and checking out what, to, you know, some basketball rookie class is. There's one that says transgender boy wins the girls wrestling title. Now, what's amazing about this story, not only in the fact of the headline that I just read, but where it happened. A transgender boy, Mac Beggs, wins the Texas State Girls wrestling title Texas you would think Texas like the old days or, or maybe like in China if they have a girl they just try and get rid of it you would think possibly in Texas they wouldn't even let there be a transgender person <laughs> that, that's my literally that's my first thought is holy cow Texas? There's transgender people in Texas? Just because I'm not dumb enough or naive or ignorant enough to believe that there's not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we all know how Texas is. Red as red state gets. And so, to me, it's amazing. And on top of this, what high school? I'm a big high school football fan. Not just Minnesota. Quite honestly, lastly, Minnesota, because it's not good in Minnesota. But around the country, there is some top-notch high school. Texas being one of them, obviously. Texas, for those of you who don't know, and I, I, I know this is probably you know redundant, but Texas in football is like hockey in Minnesota. If that strikes a chord with people you know watching on Facebook Live or listening from Minnesota, that is the equivalent, and and maybe even more fanatical than than hockey in Minnesota, which is saying something, because hockey in Minnesota is crazy, we all know that, but in Texas, football is literally religion, and so bottom line, I know of Euless Trinity High School from their football team, which year in and year out is a powerhouse, so anyway, this junior, uh, Mac Beggs, <laughs> born a girl, he was not a hermaphrodite. I had to actually look this up, okay? So, you know, laugh, make jokes at me, whatever. I wanted to know if a hermaphrodite and transgender were different. Apparently they are. Hermaphrodite, you're born with uh, both, both, you know, sides of the plumbing. And uh, whereas transgender, you're born with one plumbing, uh, but you feel like you need the other one and want to get rid of the one you got. So this kid <coughs> was born a girl. And in Texas, it is, how do I say this? Basically, in Texas, they have, uh, it goes by your birth certificate, which side you, you, you play for, you know, when it comes to boys and girls. And since Mac Beggs was born a girl, 
He is, she is, sh she, as of right now, I, I don't know, I don't know, well, apparently she's a she, yes, born that way, this is tough, this is kind of tough, um, wrestled a bunch of girls, the problem is, not that he's, uh, she is winning, and it goes 56-0, and 0, or whatever it was during the championship, the problem is, that Mac Beggs is taking testosterone injections to get her to be a guy. Or a boy in this sense, being that she's only 17. Um, and so, yes, testosterone to transition. And so bottom line, though, is he, she, no, she, if you look at the picture, number one, thank God, she is wanting to be a guy because she is hideous looking. Just throwing that out there, number one. I mean, she would be one of the ugliest girls, you know, to, to walk. So anyway, her being a guy, probably best interest for her. <laughs> but she, if you look at the photos, I mean, it's not, it's not fair. It's, it's just not fair. And that's also being reciprocated, that opinion, by obviously the parents whose girls have to wrestle this thing. And so, like, she beat everybody by a margin of basically 10 points, if not more. If you look at her photo, she looks thick. You know what I'm saying? She looks thick. I'm not terrible. I'm being honest. Now, honesty, some of y'all need tough love. This girl's ugly, bottom line. So being a guy probably is going to be good for her. And, it, I mean, whatever. I live down the street from the LGBTQYZ deal. And there, you know, there's some really butch-looking women outside that thing. Uh, anyway, so the problem is obvious. Where is the fine line? Where is the silver lining? What is uh, What needs to be done in this situation? They talk about, in Texas, 95% of the voting um, uh, superintendents voted, you know, to go off with a birth certificate. So basically, it's not going to change anytime soon. So uh, two things. I feel bad for this girl, guy, because obviously she's getting national attention, probably doesn't want it. I feel bad for the girls she is wrestling because... They don't stand a chance. I mean, if, number one, they, they're wrestling in the 110-pound division. And so, these a girl who's 110 pounds is a twig. And and has having, uh, granted, they have to make weight and all that, I get it. But to have to wrestle, you know, somebody who's 10 times stronger, that's just, it's, it's not fair. But what do you do? That's the problem, obviously. Um, and I don't know. I, you know, I, the world that we live in, holy Hannah, I don't necessarily know what, what, what can you do? What can you do in a situation like this? I don't know. I really don't. Um, is it, it, obviously it's a very, very small, this is one instance out of thousands, if not millions, is millions too much when you talk about, you know, High school students, I would think so, maybe. You know, I mean, K through 12, yeah, millions. 9 through 12, probably not millions, but thousands upon thousands of kids. So this is obviously independent of the majority. It is, it's a, a very small instance. But at the same time, I mean, man, you gotta, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. What do you do? I, there is, there's just... So it's interesting, and you know this. This kid's parents want, you know, and him. He wants to wrestle boys, um, you know, and so it's it's just the Texas part is is kind of gaining the way, you know. But at the same time, you're you're having to. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea, honestly. I don't know what to uh, what to say about it. Oh, I mean, I've said enough about it, quite honestly. I just don't necessarily know where they can go. All I, I know, this is a bigger... I don't... It's not an issue, obviously. It's not an issue. Be whoever the heck you want to be. It's, uh, I mean, whatever. I don't care. It's just like earlier. Drugs? Whatever. If you want to do drugs, grant. 
great. If you want to be a guy and you're a girl, eh, whatever, you know. If you want to bang for money, bang for money. I don't, I, I, there's very little I actually care about, I'll be honest with you. But when you're put in a situation like this, it, it, it makes, it clouds the water. That's all I'm saying. Um, and it's a, it's a very, very slippery slope. I'm terrible because I'm, I'm, you know, trying to have fun with this. And, uh, you know, Dom, I, it, to me, it's, it is funny. You know, I mean, it's just, it's a slippery slope. And, uh, you know, it makes national headlines. So therefore I can talk about it. I, I would never ever know about this. Unless ESPN doesn't blast it on their front page as a headline. I would never know. You know, it's not like I'm looking this stuff up. <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, I thought that was an interesting deal to lead off. But, um, <laughs> moving forward, I guess. Maybe I should... <clears throat> things, have been, uh, things have been good. It's the Academy Awards tonight in L.A., and only in Hollywood, only in Hollywood does a LA Fitness close down their classes uh, because of the Academy Awards. It, granted, they, the LA Fitness I go to is literally right on um, uh, Hollywood Boulevard where they're having the Academy Awards, uh, so I understand. Okay, go for basketball. Amen to that, Dom. 81-71. I mentioned a few stats earlier, um, you know, but it just, I don't necessarily know how to feel, and I don't know if it's because I'm a Minnesota fan, or if it's just, you know, because they're so young, they went through that five, you know, game stretch, uh, where, you know, they, they had that losing streak, um, but I don't necessarily know what, how to look at the Gophers right now, it, I, I mean, obviously they're, they're sitting in third place right now in the Big Ten. Third place. They were three and six. They're only two games out of first place. I don't think they're gonna do that. I don't necessarily know. I think I think they actually can win the Big Ten. If Purdue loses out and and Maryland and Michigan State, who does Michigan State play today? I can't remember, but bottom line is I think it's possible that the Gophers could actually win the Big Ten. Bottom line is they're a, they're a shoe-in now for the tournament, which is awesome. And, if, you know, I don't know how many of you actually saw that locker room, you know, deal uh, video of Patino and basically telling them, yes, this is, it's not, are we in anymore? It's our, what seed can we get? If the, if the tourney was to start today, what seed do you think they would be? I, I, they're 22 and seven. You know, I mean, uh, Dom, uh, this is eight wins last year, right? This is what is it? Is it the biggest turnaround ever? Is that what I heard in college basketball? I was thinking six seed too, but is it the biggest turnaround? I want to say in college basketball history. I think um, we we'll go from eight wins last year to 22. It's a 14 game turnaround at this moment. They still have to play Nebraska at home on Thursday. And then the final game of the season, they go to Madison and play Wisconsin. Uh, I mean, biggest turnaround this year. So not in history. Although, I mean, uh, yeah, I, you know, when you're looking at history, I would assume it would be, who knows? It's probably something just crazy, like 25 points or something like, or 25 games. But if, if it ended today, I agree with you, Dom. I think it's a six seed. Uh, or some, you know, somewhere around there, six or seven, something like that. Um, they obviously have a chance to improve that. They're they're sitting, like I say, at third place right now in the in the Big Ten. They they lose the tiebreaker to Michigan State because they got swept by them. Uh, but Michigan State, I, like I say, I can't see any texts. By the way, uh, if anybody is sending one, and I apologize. Uh, just because uh, I'm doing the Facebook Live through my my phone, and I can't see that. Uh, and yeah, I agree. Tough place to play in Madison, and I don't see them winning that game. Although, did anybody see them winning in Maryland? 
Honestly, I did not see them winning in Maryland. I really looked at the rest of the schedule. I thought they would beat Penn State yesterday. I thought they would beat Nebraska. But I really did believe they would lose to, uh, excuse me, to Maryland. At Maryland? I mean, and granted, I know nobody in the Big Ten is really, really dominating. Um, but... To go into Maryland, I, I thought that was impressive. And to exact revenge on Maryland because they beat us, uh, you know, at the barn. I thought that, that, I did not expect that. And that is what makes me have cautious optimism. Because I'm not ex I'm not saying they're going to win the tourney, okay? But, I mean, you got a guy in, in Reggie Lynch yesterday who had 11 blocks. Now, keep in mind, he has an issue with fouling out. He fouled out eight times already this year, but he had zero fouls yesterday. I, it's tough to explain, and I'm not a basketball guru, but it's hard to explain the impact that he has when he's on the floor. He is a rim protector, a bona fide shot blocker, as we saw yesterday with 11 blocks, but just yesterday alone, even before yesterday, I should say, he's known for this. Like, this is what he does. And if, if he, but unfortunately, like I say, he's not on the court a lot because he's always in foul trouble. And so for yesterday, this is exactly what can happen if he stays out of foul trouble. I hate to actually, you know, put the onus on one person. But he is so important, so important to the Gophers' success. And granted, they won in Maryland with him on the bench. Curry came in, played a hell of a game. I watched that front to back. That was a great game. Don't get me wrong. But Curry, or, I'm sorry, Lynch showed yesterday the impact that he can have because generally he'll have two fouls in the first half. They'll take him out. So he's not there at the end of the first half. And then they'll put him out pretty much at the beginning of the third or the second half, you know. And, they, and sure enough, he always picks up a quick foul, so he's just not in a lot. I don't know what his minutes per game is, but he's just not in a lot. And so to see him to play the whole game pretty much yesterday, that is so. Oh man, I'm telling you that it it it, it, it it's everything. It really is because then Jordan Murphy, who by the way went 16 and 16 is free to be able to do that type of line, that stat line. Um, you know, and, and Nate Mason almost had a triple-double yesterday. I think he had 16, 10, and 8. Uh, I, I mean, it's, a, it's just a really fun team to watch. They're believing, and that's the beauty of sport. Being able to have momentum builds confidence and it works both ways don't get me wrong that five game losing streak you know i mean it, it that momentum was negative and it obviously showed you know with five straight losses but the beauty is come tournament time it's always the teams who are playing the best at tourney time who end up winning uh you know the the whole kemba walker and connecticut the yukon team comes to mind you know right away <clears throat> you know years back but it seems to be that way. Generally, the teams who are really playing well come tourney time are the ones who kind of advance. Gophers are doing that right now. Granted, like I say, they should take care of business Thursday night, home against Nebraska. They should win that game. Good teams win those games. I, I was nervous about the Penn State game yesterday. They beat us in Happy Valley, but that was also a 10-point collapse, a 10-point lead at halftime that the Gophers just blew. Um... And so, but at the same time, I was still somewhat concerned about that. Uh, and so, therefore, I, you know, I'm happy that they dominated the way they did yesterday. That shows me it's confidence. They are rolling right now. Uh, and it's like Tino's in the locker room. Keep riding this train. Um, and so, I expect them to win at Williams Arena on Thursday night against Nebraska. Again, you go to Madison... I want to say that's a Sunday game. I think that's next Sunday. Could be Saturday, but I, I want to say it's Sunday. I'm going to check that actually real quick and see exactly when that is. If that's a Sunday game, that would be really cool. 
Um, so Thursday, Friday, so yeah, that is a Sunday game. That's really cool. So next Sunday, how cool would that be too? And I don't necessarily know when the uh, uh, seating, you know, the, the TV deal is or whatever the heck that is. Uh, but uh, it should, it, I don't, all I'm saying is if they beat Wisconsin, you know, that, that could possibly be a first place game, dependent on what Purdue does. Uh, and where's Purdue in this mess? Hold on a sec. I gotta see. Michigan State, by the way, has Wisconsin today. What a huge game. I, mean, I don't even know which way to go on that one. Where in the hell is Purdue? There's Purdue. I want to see what the teams have that is remaining. And Dom said biggest turnaround was Ohio State. Went from eight and twenty-two. In 97, 98, 27, and 9, and Final Four. How crazy is that? I want to... Who was on that team? In 19... When was that? 97, 98, 98, 99. I'm trying to think of who was on that team. I have a lot of guys in my head that I see playing for them. I just don't necessarily know if that is when it is. Um, okay, so two weeks from today. Yeah, and that's when all the tournaments... So not next week, but like I say... The, basically two weeks from today is the tournament. Also, you know what two weeks from today is? Is my favorite day of the year. I'm just going to throw that out there real quick. It's my favorite day of the year. That is daylight savings time. So, yeah, baby. <clears throat> Michael Red. That's it, dude. That lefty sweet stroke, man. Uh, but, yeah, daylight savings time is my favorite day of the year. Push that clock ahead and get that daylight. I love the days that go until about 930 so anyway, um, but the Gophers have an opportunity. Now, looking at the standings again, Wisconsin today against Michigan State. Michigan State, I want to say, is home in this game. I would love it if they beat Wisconsin. Really, you know, as a Gopher fan, you want that to happen. I know Michigan State has the, uh, the tiebreaker with us, but Michigan State still has to play they play home against Wisconsin today. Let's say they, they win that game, which would be great. 10-6, they're tied with the Gophers, but even more more so important is they knock the, the Badgers to 11-5. and five. We're only a game back of the Badgers then. After today, Michigan State, this is today their last home game. Then they go to Illinois, which granted they should win, but on next Sunday when we're playing the Badgers, Michigan State goes to Maryland. So... That I'm telling you, that there's a lot of stuff that's going on, and a lot of seeding and things that are going to be taking place. This is, and Purdue, what did I say they have left? Hold on a sec here. God dang it, they've got two games left, and they are playing. Ooh, home against Indiana. Granted, they should win, but next Sunday, dude, how cool is that? Next Sunday is going to be fun. <clears throat> Purdue at Northwestern. I mean. Say what you want about Northwestern, right? But North, that's uh, that, that's awesome <laughs> because Northwestern's sitting at nine and seven, and I don't care what they got going on today or Michigan. I don't care. All I'm saying is Michigan State, Wisconsin today, and then basically the top five teams: Minnesota, Wisconsin, Maryland, Michigan State, and then Purdue at Northwestern. The top six teams in the Big Ten will play each other next Sunday. <clears throat> things will be what they like to say, sorted out. And I can't wait. God, that's awesome. Uh, so, and, you know, Gophers are just playing good and they're fun to watch. What's really cool about the Gophers right now is two things. Number one, I would love to be back and in Minnesota just to go to a game at Williams Arena because back in 96, 97, granted I was down in the, you know Fort Campbell, Kentucky in the Army, but you would watch the, I would watch the games, and it was just outrageous how Williams Arena was going. And even before that, I remember back in the, the early 90s when, uh, you know, the Kevin Lynch's and the Willie Burton's and whatnot went to the Elite Eight. Uh, and, and, you know, going to Williams Arena was epic. That was so fun. That place is really, really cool when you're winning. And apparently now that place is back. And on top of that... I feel like the Gophers are, are doing this all a year early. Just because 
they've got a kid coming from, I think it's New York or New Jersey, something like that, who, I think his last name is Washington. Apparently, this kid's like a four or five star guard who's legit, uh, and they got a, a, a couple other guys that uh, are coming, and that's not even to say the couple Minnesota products that are actually really, really good. Yeah, the Georgia Tech game, god dang, that was the Elite Eight game. Um, after beating Duke in the Sweet 16, uh, they ended up, you know, losing in the Elite Eight to uh, to Kenny Anderson, Georgia Tech. Yeah, the kid, I think his name is Washington, Dom. Top rank New York City point guard. Do you have any idea what that means? I mean, so hockey in Minnesota, football in in Texas, and basketball arguably in New York City. Arguably. I'm not sure if that's, you know, legit or not, but it it could be. Uh, and so this kid is, I think his name is Isaiah Washington. And he's the top-ranked point guard in New York City. Granted, he's a high schooler. He's young. But from all the things that I've read up on, this kid is the real deal. And so you add him to the mix, to the Gophers, along with, you know, Nate Mason. Is that his name? Am I? Yeah, I'm having a brain fart real quick. You know, he's going to be a senior. And what great leadership that's going to be. I want to say he's going to be a senior. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's going to be a, a junior. But bottom line is, Isaiah Washington on this team, and I want to say they're getting another kid, and I can't remember exactly who it is. Um, but things are looking up for the Gophers, and I think that's awesome. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, transition real quick. Um, <clears throat> you guys tell me, what do you want, Timberwolves or the Vikings? Timberwolves or the Vikings? I mean, Timberwolves, holy cow, man. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, they let up 142 points. And granted, Houston scored some points. They scored 130, but man, I don't... Thibodeau is known for his defense. He had his top-ranked defenses in Chicago. He comes here. They are one of the worst defensive teams in the league. And it's all about effort, so everybody says, on defense. And, man, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Hold on. Uh, flashback to the Gophers real quick. Dom says they also get Jameer Harris. Oh, no. Hold on. Are you talking about the, the New York City kid? Because I want to say they got a Washington, an Isaiah Washington. Am I wrong on this? Or is Jameer Harris another kid? Because you say he's the 12th ranked combo guard in the nation. And if that's two separate kids, that that would be really great. <laughs> that would be really, really cool if that was the case. Um, another kid. Wow. Another kid? In the words of Chris Rock, another kid? When he's talking about Michael Jackson. <laughs> another kid? Oh, that's just so great. So funny. I mean, seriously, think about this. The Gophers are 22-7. and seven. Rocking it. It is Isaiah Washington. All right, thank you. They're doing really well right now. And then you've got the top-ranked point guard in New York City coming in Isaiah Washington. And then, as Dom just showed, you got Jameer Harris, the 12th-ranked combo guard in the nation, coming here. I mean, number one, I... I guess I don't know if I, I I don't remember if I was on the fire patino train last year or not when they went eight and twenty three or whatever it was. I don't necessarily think I gave that team any time on the show to be honest with you. Um, but you do need talent. You could be the greatest coach in the world. You can still get the most out of your kid, but if they're not talented, you know you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Was I? I was saying. I, I was I, I was saying he's he should get out of here. Oh, I mean everybody was so whatever. <laughs> but now, it you know patience in our society. I am as to blame as everybody, especially in the sports realm. You're so quick to just jump on the fire and bandwagon, you know, especially when you're historically bad at uh, you know eight and twenty three. <laughs> but you know what he's done. With in an influx of talent, Akeem Springs is a uh, a graduate transfer from Illinois State or no Wisconsin 
Green Bay lacrosse something. Something. Um, anyway, grad transfer, you know, and, and Mason and now Amir Coffey, a big a big get for him, you know, from the state of Minnesota. Richard Coffey's kid. There's there's just a lot of kids who are are giving. Jordan Murphy is another year older. Um, they're just playing really well. And then you're going to add a couple of really, really good guards. I don't know what he's got coming in for the bigs. Obviously, you still need bigs. Especially in college, I feel like you can easily win in college with a big. Um, you know, they're kind of absent in the NBA now. But as far as college goes, I think if you have that big, because not a lot of teams have a big, you know, a, a real dominant one. If you can get one, I think that obviously makes things a lot easier in college basketball. Um, but I just, I'm excited. I think it's fun. You know, I mean, obviously the worst part is if they get really good, Patino could leave. But keep in mind, this is Minnesota basketball versus Minnesota football. And granted, I, I trust me, I hope P.J. Fleck does great things for the Gopher football program. But Minnesota basketball, I grew up playing basketball, and I didn't ever play the AAU, but I played on the traveling team a, a year or two. And ever since my youth, Minnesota basketball has always been really good. Like, my buddies who went on to play AAU basketball, they would go to other states and dominate. They would really do well. The Minnesota Stars, I think is what they were called. And they would go to these national tournaments and beat ass and do really, really well. Um, so, to th I believe that Patino... And, I, you know, I mean, obviously Minnesota doesn't have the name recognition as a Kentucky or, you know, fill in the blank. But, you know, I mean, and who knows, maybe, maybe you know, his dad, Rick, is keeping the seat warm at Louisville. You know, obviously that's a much better name school than Minnesota. But I think Minnesota has such, a, such opportunity to be really, really good. I really do. Uh, I think Minnesota's talent in state is comparable uh, to a lot of kids around the country, and we've seen that with Royce White. And uh, uh, trying to think of the kid who went to uh, Las Vegas to play this year. God dang it! Can't think of his name. Oh shoot. Anyway, um, all I'm saying is I think Minnesota has. A, a legit opportunity uh, opportunity year in year out to be a player in the Big Ten and quite honestly nationally I really do he went to Finley prep Dom um, he actually didn't even go to Finley prep he, he actually went to a different school in Vegas not Finley prep God dang it I can't think of this kid's name and it's just killing me superstar Superstar in Minnesota high school basketball, you know, last year. Uh, and I, I don't know how he's doing this year. I think he's actually doing really well. Um, but I just, I cannot think of it. And it. Oh, dang it. Bottom line is all I'm saying is Minnesota has a lot of good basketball talent. And so, therefore, with Patino, I really believe he could stay longer than a lot of people actually think he, he will. Uh, which would be great, too, for Minnesota. But bottom line is if they're still really good, you know, let's say for the next two, three years he's there, they build a program, he builds it and leaves. Um, I mean, that's that's good for the next person as long as you bring in somebody who's legit. And what good that does is actually show the next person that you bring in that Minnesota basketball can be really, really good. Oh, man, I just think they, they have a hotbed. I really do. It's weird to think Minnesota has a hotbed in basketball, but they do. They really, really do. Uh, so, anyway, moving on. Like I was talking about the Timberwolves. Good Lord. Um, God, I got a hair in my nose or something. I'm not trying to <laughs> look like that on Facebook Live, but God damn it. Anyway. Ah, I think that is a hair. <laughs> yeah, anyway, whatever. Um. Timberwolves lose 142-130. I mean, 142-130. That's hilarious, by the way. That's hilarious. Um, just so obscene. And I don't know, like I said, and I think I mentioned it last week on the show, too. 
their defense, you have to you have to want to play defense. You really do. Gary Trent, that's it. I think it's Gary Trent, Dom. I think that is exactly who it is. Gary Trent. He didn't go to Finley prep. He went to a different school in uh in Vegas. Gary Trent Um Las Vegas High School. Switches schools again. Oh, how funny is that, dude? He, yeah, yeah. So he's he switched high schools again. That may, you know what? Maybe that tells you he's a little bit of a head case too. I don't know, but I thought he went to a different school, and now possibly he's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he went to Finley Prep, bud. And then he transferred to this place called Prolific Prep. That is what it is in California. I'm telling you right now, the kid, I don't know. Maybe he's a little, you know, Lucy Lucy like Royce White. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But at the same time, it's, uh, you know, Minnesota has has players. Bottom line, that's all I'm saying. So let's, let's move on. I don't, is it worth talking about the Timberwolves? Is it? Let's just say right now they're not in the playoffs. All right, I don't think they're going to be making the playoffs. Not the A seed, even though they're only three games out. I don't know. Maybe they could. Is it good for them to do so? Apparently, the draft is really you know loaded this year. Um, I just think they need to play defense, and I don't necessarily know what else you can do. I thought Tibbs was going to come in, and before the season, I really believed that the Timberwolves would at least be middle of the pack defense. I mean, I don't, how do, how do you do this? How do you let up 142 points to a team without overtime? 35 plus points a quarter, 35 and a half, I think is what it comes out to. And you're gonna, I, I mean, wow, wow. And Tibbs, that is, I don't care what anybody says, that is disappointing. It's disappointing to me. I mean, I don't... And uh, Dom, the Pelicans, I do like the fact that they didn't trade for Rose, too. I, I like Rubio. I really do. I don't like him a lot, but I think he's better than Rose. And granted, Rose is an expiring contract. They were going to get rid of that, you know, which is nice. Free up some space, blah, blah, blah. But Rubio is a decent player. Yeah, he can't shoot really well. But man, other than shooting, which I know is a pretty important part and aspect of basketball, outside of the shooting, his he just plays with a fire, and I like it. He's obviously a really good passer, but I think he plays with a certain tenacity that is, uh, you know, a, a, a characteristic that a lot of people don't have. I I like him. I like him. Um, you know, I mean, but you also got Tyus Jones. You got, you drafted, you spent a fifth overall pick on Chris Dunn, which that's not looking so hot right now, but I don't know basketball enough. I mean, maybe Chris Dunn, you know, the kid's 22 years old. You know, I mean, give him a break. I don't know. You know, maybe he's going to do something really good. Um, and maybe Rubio is going to get moved in the off season. And, and maybe you are just going to go with Dunn and, and Tyus Jones. Albeit, what I was saying earlier, too, I looked at a mock draft. And I think I mentioned this on the show last week, too. It's it, it You have top five picks in the draft, all freshmen. And they're all, well, they're not all point guards, but there's, I think, five or so freshmen on the team. Or, uh, God, I, this is some, sorry, somebody just walked by us. Anyway, there's five, the top five picks are all freshmen, three of which are point guards, or four maybe, and then some, uh, you know, forward or something like that. But maybe you're going to get one of them. I just don't know what the Timberwolves can do. Defensively, Dom, you say it's a lack of communication on defense. I, so, okay, well, I mean, who is his... Was his vocal leader, you say his, he's used to having a vocal leader like KG. I'm assuming his vocal leader in Chicago was probably um, Joachim Noah. I mean, I guess they probably had a couple. 
uh, you know, uh, leaders on that team on defense. I don't know what it is. Is it also a, just a want, though? You know what I'm saying? Is it just a want to be good on defense? I, I truly believe that it is a mindset and it is effort. You either want to be good or you don't. And in this day and age, in the NBA, you turn on the highlights, and we've been saying this for a while, actually, but it's three-pointers and dunks. That's it. There's no, oh, wow, like, look at the... Bruce Bowen for the Spurs is the last person that I remember just people talking about as defensive, a good defensive player. And I'm being honest right now, and I follow sports. I can't think of anybody that they're like, oh, yeah, this guy is just such a, you DM up, you know? I mean, I don't know. I don't think of anybody, I you know, I I don't know. I, it's just, it's, I feel, well, put it this way. Look at the All-Star game. It was almost 200 to 200, literally. I mean, it was almost the, the Houston-Minnesota score from last, last night. That's how ridiculous that game was, by the way, last night for the, for the T-Pups and the, and the Rockets, is that you actually had, it was, there were only 40, 90 points off of what the All-Star game was, which is saying something, because the All-Star game was obnoxious. But that's basketball now. You know, I mean, it's not what it was when I was growing up. Bottom line, I have to, I have to accept that. Is it boring to watch for me? Yeah, you know, I once again, I'm a, I'm a defensive guy. I like defense in football. I like defense in sports. I'm not all about the 142 to 130. I'm not. I never will be. And so when it comes down to it, I just feel basketball doesn't have defense anymore. And granted, I, there's teams who play de decent defense, but remember a couple weeks back when I was going down the the actual points for, points against, as team-wise, there was three. I don't know if that's changed yet or not. I'm actually going to look it up real quick. Standings. There was three teams in the whole league that were giving up less than 100 points. Three. Let me see. Now, yep, same three. Utah, San Antonio, and Memphis. And what do you know about those teams? They play defense. You know, the Utah and Memphis, for sure, they're banging, banging teams. And then they, um, you got, you know, the Spurs, who are just good at everything. But nobody plays defense. Dallas is close. They're 100, you know, on the nuts. So let's just give it to them. They're, they're pretty close. But it's just nobody plays defense. And that is, you know, for the Timberwolves, you have Wiggins, who I believe could be a really good defensive player. And I don't know why he's not. I, you know, I have no idea. But he, in my opinion, could be a really good defensive player. He's long. He's athletic. I think he, you know, it's just a mindset. You look at him, and he's a passive kind of a kid. Yeah, the Phoenix Suns Suns scored 173 points in regulation against the Nuggets in 1990. That's uh, in regulation. That's not even overtime. That's ridiculous. I mean, it's. I will say this. Back in the uh, what time was it? I want to say early 90s. Uh, about the same time as that Gopher team against Georgia Tech, Loyola Marymount. Here in Los Angeles, which, by the way, I never knew it was on the ocean. I mean, literally, it's in it's in Marina del Rey, Playa Vista area. It's on the ocean, Loyola Marymount. I didn't know that growing up. Knew it was in California. I didn't know it was in the on the ocean. But either either way, Loyola Marymount was super fun to watch. That was because it was so different. And they were Paul Westfall, the coach, said you cannot let the shot clock get below. I think whatever it was, 25 seconds or 20 seconds. So, I mean, they were just hoisted. They'd come down just boom, 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 boom. It was, it was fun to watch. Um, and like you say, Don, pace does have a lot to do with it. 90s, early 2000s, much fewer possessions. But that goes along with, I believe, defense and half-court sets. There's much more, you know, fast break this day and age and get up and run, run, run. Um, and, yeah, so I don't know. It's uh, 
I don't know. It, I just, as far as the Timberwolves go, though, you have to, you have to play defense. You just have to look at the, look at Peyton Manning and the Colts. You know, think of if the Colts had good defenses during the Peyton Manning era. They would have won Super Bowls. They would have beat the Patriots, but the Patriots had their number in the playoffs because they played better defense. That's not, that is not an opinion. That is fact. And that's just the way it is. The Timberwolves, imagine how good they could be. And I think they're going to get a lot better. They're still so young. Think about how young they are. Carl yeah, Anthony Towns, I think, is 20 or 21. Wiggins is 21. I, I mean, Zach Levine is 21 or something like that. They're all right about there. Maybe not even drinking age yet. So they're going to get there. I just believe that if you got a great offense, it would probably behoove you to play some good defense. And it's just there. It's the all sports, all of them, are littered with teams that are prolific offensively. And but for whatever reason, they can't play a lick of defense, and they don't win. Peyton Manning, you know, and and the Colts. You got Drew Brees and the Saints. Uh, you know, the Timberwolves, the the Houston Rockets, good example. I mean, there's just. There's a lot of teams that can throw up a lot of points, but you, you have to have a semblance of defense, even if you're middle of the road. If you have a top offense and you have a middle of the road defense, you can do good things. But if you've got the, the best of the offense and the worst of the defense, well, what good is that going to do? Yeah, you're going to win games like Houston did last night, 142 to 130, and then, don't get me wrong, Houston's obviously doing well. Uh, what are they right now? I want to say they're, they are, yeah, 42 and 18. Obviously, they're doing well. But 115 points a game they're scoring, but they're letting up 108. 108. Is that last? I mean, i got to imagine. No, it's not. Wow. Holy cow. Good God. Phoenix, Denver, Los Angeles, Portland. Good God, they suck. <laughs> Houston's the only one though that is is you know fifth from the fifth worst in the Western Conference, and it, are are still in a plus side by seven because their offense is so do dominant. But what happens in the playoffs? What happens when they go up against Utah? Re seriously, I'm just you know, or they go up against Memphis. That is real. Obviously, if they go up against San Antonio, they're probably going to lose that. I mean, that's just, you know, I mean, not necessarily, but San Antonio's letting up 98, you know, and, and Houston scoring 115, uh, I don't know. I think that's going to be, you know, pretty, pretty tough. But Utah is sitting right at, at the four spot. Houston's at three. I will say this. Clippers are the five. So look at it like this. you got the Clippers, who actually played defense to start the season. Not anymore. But you'd have a Utah Clippers and a Houston Memphis. Memphis can beat Houston with that defense. They're letting up 99 points a game. They don't score a lot. But, man, I'm telling you, you know, that is the thing in sports. You have a good offense. It just kills me that teams like the Colts with Peyton Manning back in the day. It's like, man, we got Peyton Manning and a prolific offense. What do you think we should do with the defense? Oh, whatever. Look at college football. Oh, my God. How many Texas Tech teams? Look at Mike Leach up in Washington State. Oh, what's this trying to outscore them? Defense, what's that? Ninety seconds. Wait, holy cow, I only have 90 seconds left on the show. Dumb, you know, you're talking about points per game is, is dumb and, you know, it's more points per possession. You're a geek. I'm not. You know, I, you're the statistician. <laughs> I'm not. I just, uh, you know, a, a season of, of points scored can give you an idea of what it is. And I get it. You probably have a stat that shows that better. But even so, you can still go off this. And kind of get an idea of what it is. Houston is a prolific scoring offense. Defensively, they suck. I mean, it's not, that isn't too, you know. But yeah, they slow, Memphis is giving up 100 because they slow it down. Yeah, and that is why they could beat Houston. That's what I'm saying. Defense 
can sometimes dictate pace of play. And that is what Memphis does. And that is why I think Houston may have an issue. You know, I mean, you can jack up shots all day long, you know, but at the same time, if you're not getting as many and they're not falling that day, well, who knows? Houston's home record, by the way, is the same as the Gophers' record, 22-7. and seven. I, just, I just caught that. It means nothing. Uh, anyway, uh, I guess that's all I got. show's going to be done here in about 10 seconds. So, anyway, thanks, all of you, for listening. Dom, thanks for your help on Facebook Live. Uh, the rest of you have a fun Sunday fun day. I'm Alistair. You're listening to Shirts v. Skins, a sports show. I'm out. See you guys. Those of you on Facebook Live. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you so much. I love it. Hope you all have a great day. It's overcast here. It's cloudy. Um, hopefully it's not going to be like that all day. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, is it the Academy Awards or the Oscars? Is that the same thing? I, I should probably know that being in Los Angeles. But um, I am going to a uh, party today an Oscar party tonight or whatever it is so that should be fun uh, it's not like an event it's at a house <laughs> but either way it should be fun so anyway you guys have an awesome day and I will see you later ciao